Uh, nothing's popping. Nothing's popping. Just waiting for my guest. Having an okay day. Having an okay day right now. Uh, I've been shooting all afternoon, so I have not eaten. So I'm kind of hungry. So I'm kind of looking forward to getting this. Uh, getting this. That's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Maybe go to the gym. We'll see. There he is. My G. How you doing? Oh shit. Is, I'm so doing. Is, is that that's that's not the guitar? That's like a million string bass, right? <laughs> Pretty much. That's a eight string. That's an eight string. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. You're already like so. Uh, if you guys haven't uh, come to the realization, uh, we are going to be talking with uh, Tim Henson of the band Polyphia. How you doing, man? Hey, doing good, dude. How you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, we're just gonna kind of shoot the shit for a little bit and talk. Uh, music and guitar and and anything else that sort of uh comes up i'm sure a lot of you guys watching uh because uh it's obviously just been announced uh on tim's ig that he's coming over here live with me uh so we obviously have some fans of the band in here but also um uh, i'm sure a lot of you guys are aware of the band's music uh the great album they put out new levels new devils last year uh because of my review and um uh probably curious about uh uh, what sort of makes the band and uh you know tim tick um so uh, you know first off let me let me start by asking you some questions like sort of pre band era i guess like, <laughs> when exactly did you start taking interest in the guitar and like you know what 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 exactly you know could you could you say to kind of sum up some of those formative years i mean you know as as uh, a musician myself i i have at least somewhat of a you know, very vague grasp of, of what it means to have to practice something until you become very good at it. Um, was that something that you needed to sort of put yourself through to get to the point that you're at today? Or were you one of those like rare prodigy types who just sort of like literally picked it up and you're sort of like, you know, playing like fucking all of these crazy eight string riffs behind your head and shit. I wish, I wish. Um, when I first started guitar, really like before that, like I started playing violin at a, uh, age three because my mom is Chinese and she, okay. you know, they like to do that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. And still so like, like sort of the classical music background in you and that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, and I started like doing like orchestras and stuff when I was like seven or eight. And then I just, like, I hated it. Like she made me practice like two hours a day. And like, I had like some fairly like abusive, like teachers that would like mm -hmm. smack my hand with the bow and shit when I fucked up. Oh my God. Um, so like, that was like pretty, not tight <laughs> but um i like really hated the violin like I, I did not want to play and then when i was 10 years old my dad brought out a guitar and i had no fucking idea that he played guitar but he had he has a lot of guitars <laughs> and they're all like in the closet like and he just like never said anything about it and then like so i just sort of stashed it away yeah like for 10 years of my life i had no idea that he played and so, you know, like I went downstairs and I heard him playing and like, he fucking shreds. <laughs> like, and I was like, dude, what? And like, that's so, that was so much cooler than a violin at age 10. You know what I mean? Like all my friends were like skateboarding and, you know, getting into like, I think everybody really liked Green Day when I was 10 years old. And when, um, and when he was playing and he was sort of of that age where he was probably primarily playing the guitar the most, I mean, would have that been like the eighties sort of like the hard rock kind of like hair metal era and that sort of thing or. Like, yeah. But that? he's, he's more in like the David Bowie like type stuff, you know what okay. I mean? Um, like he, he plays like a lot of like Hendrix, which like, you know, he, he like turned me on to Hendrix and I was just like, Holy shit. Like that's fucking, you know, my jam. But I remember thinking like, well, I can play violin like pretty good as a 10 year old. And, uh, cause I've been playing for most of my fucking life. Um, I could probably be really good at guitar. So I tried it and it was a completely different instrument and I like had no fucking idea how to play it. And that kind of like intrigued me to want to get good at it. Um, because, uh, I had already like learned how to get good at one instrument. Um, and I was just like, I know the process of doing that. You just fucking practice. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I just I started practicing like all the time because it was like a it was like an escape from violin, um, and uh, eventually like I I was practicing so much guitar that they were just I was just like Dad, can I just like stop fucking playing violin and just play guitar? And he that he said no, um, <laughs> so I was like in orchestra all the way up till I was eighteen, hmm. um, which was you know like again going to like in high school like 
taking a violin to school was like not tight. So like, uh, I didn't. And like, I, I like would leave my violin at school, like, so that I would never have to take it home and like be seen holding it. And like, I never practiced like, and I'd show up to like these, like, you know, like orchestra, like the, the chamber orchestra of like the high school. Cause that was like the one with like the top one and just be that motherfucker who like, didn't like practice at all. <laughs> but you know, cause I was, uh, I was too busy, like, you know, being in a band and uh et cetera at that time so Be because of all the <laughs> because of all this like sort of emotional trauma sort of orbiting around the violin I, I mean do you have any sort of like you know internal cringe when you just hear like a violin in a recording or anything like that no no i no. i love okay the good violin. i i love classical music i love i wish i still had a violin i'd probably buy one you know i mm. want to play again you know what i mean like i i've like you know, at this point in my life, like, I don't really, like, harbor, like, any, like, very strong feelings towards anything, like, negatively, just because, like, I don't fucking, like, have, like, time to, like, do that, you know? So, like, I uh, I would love to, like, if I had time, I'd love to, like, pick the violin back up and, like, you know, like, get get my chops back and then, like, use it in the music, you know what I mean? But it's just, like, you know, I'm always fucking touring and always, like, in the studio, so it's, like, when, when am I going to be able to do that, but... So, so transitioning from violin to guitar and sort of becoming more proficient at it and practicing more, exactly when do you get at this point where you start, you know, at what age are you starting to play in more bands with other people probably around your age and, and then starting to, I guess, sort of forge and get into this, this more technical style, I guess. Um, my first band was a year after I started playing guitar mm. um, and it was called... I don't even want to say, but, uh, you know, we were sixth grade, we were sixth graders. And, uh, I remember like, I really was obsessed with Jimi Hendrix and like, I was like going under the, like the moniker that I gave myself of like Timmy Hendrix, um, you know, spelling. Yeah. You know, it's hard for a sixth grader. And then like, pretty, like there's this hard. one video that's like on YouTube from this era. Oh, um, and, uh, it's, it's basically me and my bass player and my drummer and we're doing like a jam thing. And I'd like fucking pick the guitar up behind my head and uh -huh. like do the Jimi Hendrix fucking thing. And, and that was in sixth grade. Um, have the fans discovered this, the fans have discovered this. No, no, no. They no. So this is, so this is like sitting there somewhere online now waiting to be yeah. discovered. Well, well you, okay. You so it was before YouTube. It was like on Google okay. video. It oh, was shit. like, so like it, like it's somewhere like in between like YouTube, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So, but it exists on Google, like, you know, so like I, I could probably like try and find it. But so then, um, like I, I joined a, like, I pretty much played with the same like relative group of people, like up until like high school. And then I was just like, after ninth grade, like that band broke up, like of just like the kids that I was like playing with. And I was just like, yeah, like I, I want to play with like, like sicker people. And I like, was like MySpace was a thing then. Yeah. So I was like looking at, and I wanted to play like metal, you know what I mean? Because like we were like doing like not hard shit and I wanted to do that hard shit, play like, you know, blast beats and fucking like the death metal, like atonal nonsense. And so like I started jamming with like 19 and 20 year olds when I was like 15, just to like, you know, cause they were like good at death metal and, you know, and, and then um, like at 16, I met, our old, uh, our original drummer on MySpace. And that's kind of when like this happened mm. at, at 16. So, yeah. And, and you guys had a, a bit of a progression to get up until this point. Um, and, and weren't always completely committed to, I guess, more of the math rock style that you're working with currently. Like if, if you would even call it that, I mean, is, is that even a term that you're comfortable with at that point? Or do you feel like that's a bit more of a meme or too much kind of pigeonholing what you're doing? I, uh, I don't mind like that term. I don't mind. I don't mind like when anybody calls us anything, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, I wouldn't call it math rock. Uh, mm. I'm, I want to say that like, like people, cause I've had a lot of friends who do play math rock mm. and that like, you know, they're like, don't you need like time signatures to be math rock? And I'm like, <laughs> girl, I, I, I'm like, I play in fucking four, four, like everything's in four, four, you know yeah. what I mean? I know shit about like time signatures and et cetera. Like I'm not trying to like make music like that. It just happens to be like the medium of like a bass, a guitar, a guitar and drums, you know? And it's like fairly technical, but it's not like overtly metal. So it's somewhere, it's like rock, 
and it's technical. So like, I, I understand where that term comes from, but, um, yeah, I mean, like, I wouldn't really call it like anything like that. <laughs> it just, it just, I just happen to like play guitar. I've been doing that. Like we all have been doing that for like, you know, the majority of our lives. And, uh, this is the music that we're making with these instruments. You know what I mean? So it, I guess it could fall under that umbrella, but yeah. I guess, um, you know, as, as, as you're sort of starting, uh, you know, this band and, and kind of progressing forward to where you guys are now, like, I, I guess I'm sort of wondering, like, is it because of the classical background and sort of the, the need or the demand for virtuosity sort of at that instrument that sort of, put you in a position when you picked up the guitar that, you know, when playing it, you should learn to be proficient at it, that you should learn to have some sort of level of virtuosity with it. Because I mean, obviously there's different paths one can take with such an instrument. You know, you could be sort of the average punk dude who just sort of like knows three chords and just sort of like plays with their ferocity and their energy. But clearly you've kind of gone down a bit different of a path and, you know, are doing something very technical and something very kind of complex and complicated. Yeah. Um, I would say definitely like the, the, from my background, the, the classical, like definitely like ins inspired that of like wanting to be like really good at it. Um, and then like, like with me and Scott, our other guitar player, like our dads play guitar and like mm -hmm. they, they fucking shred, you know what I mean? Like they like yeah. do guitar solos and Which shit. Which is like, like literally that. passed down in a way. Yeah. And so like, you know, wanting to like, and, and like Scott, like his dad, like got him into like Pantera and shit real early and fucking like I, my dad got me into like Hendrix. So like they both do like a lot of proficient guitar playing, you know what I mean? And so that's like the, the, of the first things that we started playing. And then, um, kind of like from there, like discovered like the virtuoso guitar players, like Steve Vai and, you know, Joe, Joe Satriani. And like, that was like really cool when I was a kid, you know what I mean? Like, like I couldn't, I couldn't different differentiate like corny shit from like, you know cool things you know what i yeah. mean like i just like as a kid i just thought it was all cool um, yeah i mean well when you're when you're learning an instrument like that and you first come across a guy like steve Vai, i mean mm -hmm. you know you're you're really more in awe of it because of how well he's playing as opposed to like sort of you know what he's catchy or you know sort of yeah. authentic or whatever it might be you know what i mean so you know as a player you're more enamored with his ability to do what he does and you know of course like you just desire to attain that too yeah yeah and and, and like i like i really in my heart when I was like 12, 13 years old, like wanted to be quote unquote, the best guitar player on earth. Right. Like that was like a fucking dream of mine when I was like that young, you know? And right. then like, I, you know, like the, then I realized like, nah, like I'm trying to like make cool music. Like I could give a fuck about like, you know, how well I'm playing this, you know, like, um, so then it just became like, all right, well, like I need to like push the boundaries of like what, what like I physically can do on this instrument to make this music that's in, you know, our heads you know and, and so that we just you know started doing that shit so mm. and um so, so to just ask one more question about um you know uh uh <laughs> the father's kind of passing down this guitar talent in a way would you say that uh, both of your dads sort of played an instructor type role in sort of like your your progression as a guitarist or were you sort of like learning from other avenues and places and sort of like you know doing a lot of uh uh, research on your own using the internet um for for me my dad showed me like you know like how to play like a few songs and then he showed me like the chords and he showed me like just like generally like this is how you hold the guitar and etc cetera, etc cetera. very basic things and then from there like i you know got on youtube even before youtube like i remember like he gave me a black sabbath cd and um, I like learned by ear, like that whole record, like all the guitar solos and stuff. Um, and then YouTube happened like a year or two later. And uh, once I discovered YouTube, it was just like, okay, like I'm now like spending all of my time just like, you know, looking up these like the the Paul Gilberts and the Steve Vai's and, and shit, like just trying to get like really good at guitar. Um, so yeah, definitely like the internet, like, I can attribute to that. And then like, I, I discovered like Guthrie Govan like a couple years later and then just like really on some fucking like push the boundaries of like guitar playing because that fool is just amazing. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff, like you said, in that era on YouTube and now it seems almost like Instagram has kind of become the new home in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Tons of, 
like amazing guitar and bass players and even like keyboard players and they're just like mm. completely shredding in these short like one minute videos which is like perfect for that sort of thing because yeah. it's like most people who don't know how to do any of that shit that's about the amount of time that they probably have patience for something like that yeah meanwhile it, like, it just like pops players, up in like the explore page and yeah. shit. like it's very accessible you know like and meanwhile but, people who do you know who are familiar with all that stuff and are players it's like you know they just want to get that quick hit of something that they can learn or like oh shit i gotta do that or i gotta see how to just mm-hmm. you know like figure it out so it's like it's super it's a super great medium for it and yeah. uh, you know obviously I've, I've realized and a lot of other people have realized that a lot of the um players that you had on the new album have like some pretty supreme like instagram followings of people yeah. like, watching them play live and just like you know watching them do random licks and stuff like that is is that how you came across uh, a lot of them or was it through something else um really like i'm friends with like everybody on our record you mm-hmm. know oh, okay i've been for years um mm-hmm. like when we first started like we kind of like it was like we weren't, nobody was really on Instagram. We all kind of like met through Facebook, mm. um, like, and uh, like became internet friends. And then like, I think it like went to like NAM, which is like the North American music merchants or something. It's like a convention for yeah, shit. Yeah. And uh, like, just kind of became like IRL friends. And then we started touring together. So like, uh, like we've pretty much been on tour with like mostly everyone on, on the record aside from like Mateus Asado. Um, who's like I discovered him like f- before Instagram, um, and I was just like, God damn, this guy's this guy's so good. <laughs> he's so damn good. Like I I, I love his shit. Um, he's like definitely one of my favorite guitar players. And then like just to be in a position to be like, yeah, like we'll, you know, like play on our record because he's like a mutual fan. Like he, you know, and and one thing happens to another, so you know that he ends up on the record, and now we're like you know friends and shit from that. But everyone else before that, you know, like, we've been friends for a long time, so. And I guess everyone is just sick. That's why they've got some, like, Instagram cloud or whatever the fuck. So. Everyone's just sick. Yeah. They're, like, really good at it, you know, what they do, so. <laughs> um, the, the next thing that I think I wanted to ask you was, um, you know, as, as, as a guitarist uh, and, and one who I is obviously attempting in, in what you say to sort of, like, push the int- it push the instrument, the performance of it, the, the current state of it, how people perceive it forward. Like, it, you know, b- before you got to the point where you're at now, and, and maybe even now at this point too, it's like, w- what exactly do you feel like is, is currently sort of like unbroken ground for the guitar? Because I, I think for most casual music listeners out there, like who are just kind of listening to whatever the top 40 is, you know, in, in their perception that the guitar is done. There's nothing new you can yeah. do with the guitar. Every guitar thing that I've ever heard, it sounds like every other guitar thing that I've ever heard. But, I mean, you guys have a pretty distinct playing style, not only between uh, between all of you guys in the band, but also many of the players who you're inviting onto the record who all similarly seem to be really enthused by these certain types of uh, tap patterns and slides and, uh, you know, sweet picks and that sort of thing. And, um, think, um, like, as far as, like, you know, the guitar being, like, done everything that you can do on it, like, like you know, and pushing the boundaries of, like, what's, what's physically possible on it and things like that, I think, uh, like, our goal is to not necessarily, like, you know, technicality-wise, like, make cooler things to do on the guitar but more so like how to use the guitar in music like what you were saying like when people listen to the top 40 like they think oh well like everything that you you know you can do on a guitar has been done i've heard that well i don't care um i think like it would be cool to make guitar cool again you know what i mean like it's it's you know every time that you hear it on the radio is just on some corny whack shit like that fucking um that one, like, I think it's, like, a Rihanna song, and they, like, sample, like, fucking, like... Oh, like Santana. the Santana sample? Yeah. The, the, DJ Khaled, the DJ Khaled song? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, like, there's just, like, a lot of shit-ass guitar playing on, on like, Top 40, you know what I mean? And, like, <laughs> and I think it would be really cool to, like, bring, like, good, you know, guitar playing to, like, mainstream music and, like, and, and how it's used in music versus like how you're actually playing but like how you're writing and how like it is actually music you know what i mean so that's uh that's kind of the ground that we're trying to break in that way of like making it 
more accessible, but like good. You know what I mean? Like, um, not on some fucking like horse shit Santana, but like, you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think um, as as much as some people are really dismissive of guitar in general, I think um, I think there's still very much a lot of room for the genre. The, 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 what I want to say is I still think there's a lot of room for the instrument. However, I think the popularity and the function of it going forward is going to hinge on, honestly, the same thing that most live instrumentation hinges on in terms of its context and popular music. And that's whether or not you can record it and work it into a DAW and sample it and manipulate it in a way yeah. where it sounds good in, you know, a pop song or a hip hop song or whatever type of song people want to hear in that moment, mm-hmm. you know? And, and it seems like because of, and, and obviously you're, you're, you're the, uh, the exception to this, uh, but because of, you know, sort of like the history and the way the guitar has been perceived up until this point and sort of this, um, you know, narrative of guitar heroism, you know, just sort of like when I think about that, I just like get this image of my, in my head of like this tall skinny dude with long hair, just like fucking windmilling on that shit. Yeah. Uh, you know, because of that, it seems like there are maybe like a lot of guitarists and maybe very good guitarists who are, probably less willing to put their guitar playing in that context because it sort of fits outside of the rock world that they remember kind of growing up in or that they see the guitar fitting within. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely like a stigma, like with like being like a guitar player, like it's guitar music in general, you know, like, mm-hmm. I mean, like most of it is not good. You know what I mean? Like it's like, most of it is just like winking in circles. You know what I mean? There's like, like the people that, you know, that we work with, like, you know, they're, they're, the ones that are like that have sick guitar music like it's like music you know the music comes first and like the instrument is like a means to an end you know what i mm. mean but um yeah there's definitely like a lot of that whole stigma of like the skinny dude like fucking like windmilling and like this <laughs> like you know like it's like it's hard to it, but yeah i feel that yeah it's it's um and and i think that like you said it's uh i would i would also kind of call it a stigma and i think it's it's probably going to take some time for people to get kind of past it and also just see the guitar in a new light unfortunately i think just like the first impressions are kind of everything and i and i think um there are probably like a lot of young music fans just like every generation whatever's left over from the past one they just automatically have this desire to reject it in order to Mm -hmm. define themselves by a new path and um i think in order to kind of fit that guitar into a new context it's just going to take you know artists like yourself uh who are just going to do different things with it and make it appeal to fans and listeners in a different way you know instead of just like with the that usual windmilling machismo, I guess, you yeah. know, you guys like have a different approach and everything. Um, yeah. So no, you, you, you mentioned technicality a, a few minutes ago. Yeah. Like the musicality of what you're doing um, is obviously significant, but for you personally, like where exactly does the line get drawn between technicality and, and what you just kind of referred to earlier is like wankery, you know, it's like what, what in your opinion or in your view sort of like qualifies as pure wankery as opposed to, well, that's just like very technical, but there's still like a strong musical component to it. I mean, it, it's, it's a very, like, it's pretty black and white. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's from, like, your, from your view. Yeah. Yeah. For me, like when I, when I watch some shit that's like, it's either good or it's bad, you know what I mean? Like, and I mean, like, I mean, there's a lot of mid too, but like, as far as like it being like technical, like, if you can, I don't know, like, you listen to his music, if I would listen to it, you know, like, versus just watch some dude play it, like, on Instagram. That's like, actually kind of a good measure. You know what I mean? Like, like sometimes, like, you know, like, if you, like, don't look at the phone and just, like, listen to it, it's just, like, what the fuck am I hearing? You know what I mean? <laughs> versus, like, you know, like, it's, it, I mean, that's, that's literally what this is. This is an instrument that makes sound. The person, the purpose of which is to make music, you know what I mean? And like it, like anything that isn't doing that is just like you're fucking, you know, it's like masturbatory, you know what I mean? Like, um, so I don't know, there's the, like, as far as like drawing that line, it's like, I don't know, like li- use your fucking ears. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I, I, does well, it I sound good? You know what I, I mean? I think, I think that's an effective way to kind of draw the line because if you're more impressed with it or if you get more enjoyment out of it watching it versus listening to it, Mm-hmm. Or if after you've listened to it, you don't walk away from it, like, humming it or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
you know, I, I think that's a good measure. And also, I think it says a lot about, I, honestly, in a weird way, and, and maybe you have an opinion on this too, I'd love to hear your thoughts, but I, I think it also kind of illustrates how much music enjoyment in mainstream American culture, probably in other cultures as well, kind of actually comes down to a visual component. Like, yeah, it, it might sound good, but it also needs to look cool. You know? Yeah, I think when you're putting out music these days, like if you don't put it out with a video, you're kind of like screwing yourself over. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause, like no one, no one really gives a shit unless there's like a cool, like fucking, like stupid ass video with you know, like shit hat. Like I love those. I love making and 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 videos. you know, by the way, that fucking you know music video that you guys did, sort of like with the you guys are popping up in like different fucking angles yeah yeah stuff. like that was like, a really it's, cool it's super video. fun like i love doing that i love doing that and so like whenever like i love that you have to do that these days because now it's like and it's like well if we don't do the video like the song's not going to do well so it's like we might as well go do a video i love making videos you know it's yeah. like super fun and like that's just like how shit pops off these days is like when like there is that visual component to it you know like uh like you just you just keep <laughs> that i guess you know you know, the, the thing is, like, I, I know that there are a lot of people, and, and I've had this feeling as well, who decry that sort of thing. Um, and I guess, it you know, it is unfortunate that we don't live in a world where it's like, oh, man, why can't it just, like, be about the music? But I don't know. If you, if you look at the music video as another challenge and another opportunity to be creative and show your creativity, it's not really the worst thing in the world. No, yeah. I mean, like I said, like, I love it. I, I enjoy it. Like, you know it's super fun like i i appreciate like all forms of art and like not just music you know what i mean like so like when it comes it's like this is the coolest job in the world because i get to be creative like in every aspect mm. you know what i mean like not just music so like i don't know i i i personally enjoy it um but like i you know that i mean like as far as the world like needing that like yeah like we we spend fucking like all day looking at our phones like everyone watching this is just like glued to their phone right now you know and I mean? like like you and i are, are doing that yeah obviously and of course of course it's going to be like that you know that's just what it is and i don't think like there's like reverting you know unless there's like some big bang happening and fucking... yeah, there's there's really no one doing this unless we literally go through another dark age yeah like a dark age that would like stop that from happening it's just going to get worse you know what i mean like in like Soon it's going to be, like, some VR shit where fucking, like, like you can feel the VR and, like, you're just in some interactive bullshit, you know. But, like, I don't know. It's it's pretty cool what, like, like I'm not mad about it. <laughs> so I, Well, what I'm hearing about now is 8D audio. Have you heard of 8D audio now? Are you guys going to do a new record in 8D audio? Is, what is that? Just, like... Uh, I have no fucking clue. I need to look into it more. I, I still have no idea at this point. Yeah, I... That, I mean, it sounds crazy. Like, I, I think it would be really cool to do re a record like that once, like, the medium catches up because, mm -hmm. like, like with the rest of the public, because, like, I wouldn't want to make a record like that when motherfuckers are listening to it on their AirPods, Apple Probably. AirPods. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and it's just, like, that's what, like, people are listening to shit on beat pills. You know what I mean? So it's just, like, like we might as well mix the fucking record on a beat pill just because that's where they're going to hear it. You know what I mean? So No, you, you actually yeah. absolutely have to take into account whatever the medium is that the person's going to be listening to the music through. And if you want an audience, like, especially these days uh, when a lot of the onus is put onto the artist to create the video, promote the music, you know, sort of like come up with what your visual and your aesthetic is and all that PR shit and everything. Mm -hmm. It's like, you've really got to think about where your audience is and how exactly you can chase them down because they're so inundated with everything <laughs> through their phones yeah. Um, yeah. that you literally need to chase after them, you know, just using the internet. Um, you, saying what you said earlier about uh, kind of being a fan of, of many art forms, what would you say for you personally as as a musician is maybe one of the most significant, uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, influential or inspiring pieces of art to you that's that's non-musical or sort of like not directly not related musical. to a piece of music? You know, yeah, watch a, a film watch or an a, illustration or a painting or something like that. Yeah, I watch a lot of porn. Um mm. <laughs> Which, which is an art form in and of itself. Yeah, it is. No, I love that shit. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I, the, as far as influential, I don't know. I, I uh, but like, I just recently went to the Digital Mori Art Museum in, in Tokyo hmm. um, and was just fucking blown away at like 
the exhibits they have there. Like it, it was like, I, I don't know if you guys have seen it or if you've seen it, but like, it's, it's that one where like, it's like an infinite mirror room or whatever the fuck, but like, I've seen like Instagram like photos photos yeah. from it. Yeah. And it's, the, it's so crazy because like you go and it's much bigger than like what you think it is. It's like, it's very huge. And there's like a million spots, but this one spot in particular, um, like it was like, rain dripping down or whatever but it was lights and uh, and like it was like trickling and the whole thing just like warps around you and there's like mirrors everywhere and it's, it's literally infinite looking because of there's mirrors everywhere and they had this music that was like playing and i remember just thinking like literally where the fuck am i like how am i like experiencing this right now and the me like i i wanted to cry like it that it was so like powerful to me that i literally wanted to cry i was so happy like just standing in that room, like, and with the, they had, like, I mean, it's Tokyo, so they got, like, some really dope, like, anime music playing, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, um, and, uh, like, it was, like, like, during, like, some, like, crazy beautiful scene, you know what I mean? Like, where it's just, it's not, like, intense or anything, but it's, it's intense, but, like, pretty, you know what I mean? And, and uh, it was, like, it, it was just something else, like, uh, and, uh, that was fucking really cool, but, um, yeah, I don't know, like, it, I guess art that's influential to me is, is just like, uh, like the Renaissance looking shit. It's just, it's like very pretty, you know what I mean? Like, like classic looking. And then I, I've like come across like a lot of artists who are like painting in that style, but like painting like hella dark shit. Um, like back then they were just like making like angels and fucking God, you know, cause it was all like religious art. And then today, like, there's, like, people, like, who are painting in that style, but, like, are painting, like, fucking, like, you know, devils and shit, which I really fuck with. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I don't know. Porn. 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 <laughs> it all comes back to porn. Love this stuff. Great. <laughs> so, um, you know, give, give me a bit of a, a look forward with what you guys are doing now that the new record's out and, um, you know, it seems like the reception is, is really good. Obviously I'm enjoying it. Um, you know, where, where are you guys moving next with your music and just basically the band in general? Do you, uh, feel this pressure like many other artists do, especially now that there's kind of been like this big influx of listeners because of the new record, uh, you know, do you feel like this pressure, like many other artists do in, you know, 2019 to be coming out with as much music as fast as possible? Like, is the new record, like literally coming out tomorrow or something? Um, it's funny because <laughs> like, like in like the comments of like a video, I just put like yesterday, fuck it. Like, people are like, stop touring and give us a new record already. Damn it. Like the yeah. last one was only 10 songs. And it's mm -hmm. like, bro, that shit just came out. Like, <laughs> like it came out, and it's like, it. and it's and the album's a fucking onion. Like you could unlayer that shit. Like, yeah, so they, like listen to it. You know, a couple more times. You know, yeah. <laughs> listen to um, it more than twice. Yeah, but uh, like I get that though, and like I I want to hear more music from us. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I'm I like I, the music well, that, that we make. That's all. That's also because like you're almost like you're you're obviously affected by this current trend of it too that you, yeah, you no, wish there was more I music love, like, now already as well yeah when like i when like i get an album that like i'm obsessed with and i'm like damn i wish there was more i want more give me more give me more you know i'm like i i'm the same way and like even with our music like i'm a big fan of our music i think it's really cool really good and fucking like i want to hear more of it and with that being said like you know we are putting out a new song like this month um and it's funny because like we started it a couple days ago and all the things are in place. The, all the lights are green for us to go with like putting out a full blown ass video that's going to be crazy as shit on the 28th or something, okay. you know? And, and uh, like, it's, it's funny because it's just in it, you know, nor, we don't do shit that fast. You know what I mean? Like it like never happens that quickly. And uh, like, we were just like, yo, let's just like not fuck around and just like do this shit. And like, every, like, you know, like the whole team, like everybody's like working like to like make this happen. And uh, like, I'm pretty stoked on it. Um, I'll even, uh, you know, like show a little like 10 second or clip of it. Um, yes, do it. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty cool, I think. Um, so, yeah, this is that. What the fuck? Hold on one second.
this is this is my uh studio setup got like you know i love plants and shit nice all right so yeah a little 10 second air clip of it <laughs> But yeah, you know, and it's uh it's really just some for us. So I'm I'm very excited to like just do it, you know. I feel like after like putting this this record out and like having like an influx of new fans, like it's it's like exciting because it just like let's just make some bullshit and like here the fuck we go, you know. So I'm I'm pretty stoked on it. It's um you know, something that kind of interested me about the track, or at least the intro, it sounded like you were playing the intro there. Um, uh, it almost had like a, a super electronic, almost like EDM kind of quality to it. You know, it sort of sounded like it had also like a trap banger, like immediately after that initial portion that you played, mm -hmm. like I can imagine some like sub bass hitting and some like or something like that. Yeah. Um, um, and, yeah, and, not, mean, certainly... and that's obviously not like, you know, a bad observation or anything like that. It's uh, just sort of interesting how, I mean, I remember growing up in an era where uh, between rock music and electronic music and hip hop, there were just like these such bold cultural barriers that rarely would anything ever cross over. And if they did, it was usually through an artist who that was like their shtick, like Beck or something like that, who just does like a little bit of everything on a song. You know what I mean? And these days it's like, everybody's just kind of applying everything to everything. And it's, it's, yeah. insane. I mean, I think it's cool because like you, you, we get like shit that like is dope, like the, the mixing of genres and like people, you know, like a lot of the times, like people like were afraid to do that because like it would just fucking suck. You know what I mean? Like the first like rap rock shit was really bad. Like the, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like, and, uh, you know, hey, those rage, those rage against the machine records still hold up. Okay. Well, I mean, that's, still that's, hold tight. Up. that's, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like fucking, um, you know, like whenever like the corny motherfuckers were like, like linking up and doing that, like within the rap world and within the rock world, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, Oh God, this is not, it's not good. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, like the more like it happens, the better people get at it and they start realizing why it sucks and how they can improve it, you know? And, and like, we're at a point now where like, you know, like there's so many cool crossover things, you know what I mean? And I, I think that's really great for the world and, you know, just music in general and, and just having like cool shit, you know, fused together and, and having like a completely new genre of things. You know what I mean? Well, there's so many cool crossover things that crossing over is pretty much just like the standard now because it's all really just kind of like washed into the same crazy internet landscape. I mean, some of my favorite songs last year uh, came out from, I don't know if you listen to Rico Nasty. I love Rico. I and really she's got like all of those amazing fucking tracks that have like the trap fucking drums, mm -hmm. but they have the metal guitars. Just like, yeah, Kenny Beats fucking kills it. Yeah, he's he's fucking really sick. I, I'm I've been talking to him. I really want to like make like a fucking like guitar banger beat like that. Like, <laughs> but yeah, I'm a super big Dude, fan. If you, if you hand him a bunch of fucking chugging metal guitars, like he'll probably work that shit into a into a Rico track like right away. <laughs> yeah, sure. well, that's just call like me. I just that I just saw like it. a little bit of an interview with her where she was just like talking about how she wants to be remembered for like doing that shit and like doing that shit so many times and doing it well. Yeah, no, she, I mean, when you got Kenny doing it fucking, like, it's very, it's done very well. And she's such a star, you know, like, Rico is such a star. I'm, I'm a big fan, you know, I love her. So, like, and, like, it's just, I love it because it's, like, she's fucking hard. Like, she, like you know what I mean? She's Absolutely. so hard. She'll wear, like, porn hoodies where it's just, like, a hoodie and, like, a picture of, like, some girl eating another girl's ass. And it's just, like, yo that's my shit you know like I, I could never get away with that you know but like she can and that's like go her you know like yas queen slay like i fuck with that you know like, <laughs> I, I i really think she's great so <laughs> um you know now, now that we're on the uh, uh subject of just sort of other contemporary music are there any other artists that that you know right now you're incredibly like addicted to their stuff or you know just sort of throw it out there because you know we are on a platform and this is going to be uploaded to youtube as well and you know a bunch of different people will probably see it you know is there any sort of like dream artist out there right now that you feel like you and the band would love to collaborate with or link up with that that you haven't sort of had the opportunity to do that with yet 
Yeah, there's there's so many. Um, like we like on our next record, we really want to like bring out the collabs and shit. So like you know, uh, if this is the place to like like to reach for it, then um, we really want to do a song with um, Mashuga and also Gucci Mane on the same oh song. <laughs> But like we're not, like the idea is that we don't tell either of them that the other one is on the song, and just well, you just spoiled put, that. Put it out. I mean, you know, I don't think Mashego or Gucci Mane's gonna see this. So <laughs> yeah, unless unless fucking like somebody's like Yo Gucci, like they want to get you on a track with Mashego. Um, no, but I, I I would really I really want to do a song with Lil Pump. I love Lil Pump, uh, and I really want to do a song with Rico. Um, and uh yeah there's so many so many people that, like in in because I, I listen to like a lot of rap um and uh like that's that's mostly what i like um and so there's just a lot of like rap stuff that i just want to like do songs with people you know so and then while we're on the subject here you know like of, of like this being like something that is being uploaded to youtube and things that i am listening to um like uh, on the, you know, shouting out like shit that's good that people should listen to. Um, my dude Lewis Grant is fucking very sick, and uh, like I think everybody should listen to his music. And so it's like that. I've been on a, on a that kick, and you know he's like even like working on this song with us and shit. So like it's you know I'm trying to put that dude on just because he's like really fucking sick and yeah. So okay. All right, aside from that sort of new song coming out on the 28th, is there anything like immediate, the, sort of in the immediate future as far as you and the band that we should be looking out for in, in the next few weeks or months? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we got the, uh, got the song coming out and then like we're, we've got this U.S. tour, um, which we are coming through New York if you're trying to pull up. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, it's like a U.S. tour and like we're pretty stoked on that. And then, you know, I guess like after that, we've got like some one off things uh, that like we're doing for like specific locations. But I guess we're just back to writing mode, which, you know, try and go sicko mode in the stew and go blanking mode after it's nappy time. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, yeah. I mean, we're, we'll we'll be keeping an eye and an ear out for all of it. So I want to thank uh, Tim Henson from Polyphia for coming through and uh, just talking with me for a little bit. I appreciate your time, man. Oh yeah, well, I appreciate you having me on, and uh, talk soon. And, you know, yeah, talk soon, and uh, for know, I'll, I'll message you. Let me know when the uh, uh, the New York date is on the tour, and um, you know, I'll see if I can fit it into my schedule. Yeah, let's get fucking shit faced.